Do you want to put it like right in front of my face? I go like this. Yeah. What if right I just this. And I just do this. this. Why don't we just zoom? <laughs> Why don't we zoom? I'll give you my laptop and I'll go over there. We'll just zoom it or do this. That that should be the conceit. No of the one's show. done a zoom in person, have they? We should do it. Not right now. Welcome everybody to What Do You Bring to the Table? I am your host, Rajiv Satyal, and I am honored to be sitting here with a very fast walking Danny <laughs> Thank you, it's an honor for me to be here with another fast walker I've heard. Yeah, I, you've heard me tell it, so I could just be. We might have to do it live. We might have to have okay. a speed walk off. This will be like an Ellen, Jimmy Fallon kind of thing. Like they do games, they do these little competitions. We can do that, we could speed walk we it. We could do it, yeah. I know. Yeah. I, I want to play horse with Hassan Minhaj out here, that's what I want to do. Do you have a fast walker here? Well, no. <laughs> There's other ways you can play horse. That, that's true. Well, right. that's the game. It's like, uh, how will we? How, how else can we do it? Garbage can? Garbage can. Crumpled garbage paper, can. right? We yeah. got the floor out there that we're going to put down in the construction. I'm going to buy a basketball hoop. But he was our first episode of this entire show. That's amazing. Yeah, that's amazing. Fun. Well, so happy to be here. I'm yeah. so glad that you are here. And so we want to jump into a, a lot of questions. We have a lot of. I posted Woo! on my Facebook, I'm going to be sitting down with Danny Pudi. And my gosh, the questions. One of the, uh, one of the questions that happened at least three times was. Does he realize he was the best part of community? Wow. Uh, very, very grateful. Uh, you don't know these things when you're doing them. Right. At least I didn't. That was my first major role. Um, mm -hmm. And I was just so happy to be there and not even really present initially. You know, right. I was trying to be, but I was just so, you know, I couldn't believe I was in this, in this moment. And so not till time goes by do you really yeah. realize the reach it had. And, you know, there's moments where I remember going to Comic-Con and seeing people who are actually watching the show other than my family and mm -hmm. being genuinely surprised that this is actually something that's connecting with people. Yeah. Um, it did with me. I, as soon as I read the script, I was like, I will watch this show. Yeah. I probably won't get it, but I will watch this show. Yeah. Uh, and then I was fortunate to be on it, and it was just an honor. And so to see it kind of connecting with people still is... Yeah. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. It's a unique yeah. show. Yes. There's, just, it's nothing, there's nothing like it before or since. Yeah, I think that's the, I mean, I've always been drawn to things that are a little, little off. You yeah, know? yeah, your whole you body know? of work it's, is like that. Yeah, just things that are, you see that are slightly off, off center. Quirky, something. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and I think there is, I've related to that personally. It's things that I've watched, like uh, Garth Marenghi's Dark Place. I don't know if you've ever seen that. No, I haven't. No, fantastic show. Matt Berry, who's on What We Do in the uh, Shadows. Shadows, uh, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Things like that that are slightly just different, yeah. right? Things that sometimes my wife or friends will watch and be like, you're into this? Yeah. <laughs> and right. I'll be like, yeah, and you're not? I don't understand. So what's, what's a great example of that? Like yeah. something, something non-sexual that you're into that would surprise us, where people are like, oh, I'm not a guest. Danny's into that. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, things that I think people would be like, uh, I love graphic novels. I read a lot of graphic novels. Okay. So like Descender is one I'm reading right now. Okay. And Ascender as well. Um, do you have to read one if you're reading the other? Kind of, yeah. yeah. Uh, is, is, is it what goes <laughs> up, what goes up, you do the ascent. You need the both, you need the yeah. sequel and the prequel. Yeah, um, but it, I think shows that I'm into, like, mm -hmm. that, like Garth Moringer's Dark Place would yeah. be a good example of that. Yeah. It's a weird show with uh, Richard Ayoade and, and uh, mm -hmm. great British comedians. I think it ran on Channel 4 maybe, I don't even know what it's on right now. Okay. But it's like a show about, uh, a mockumentary about the making of a, a fictional show. Wow. And it's just this, this very bizarre show. Like meta almost. Super kind of. meta, show within a show. Mm -hmm. But I just love that and I think I've like... Like Larry Sanders or something. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. And um, I think that goes back to like when I was a kid, I'd watch shows with my brother and we were very much into Monty Python, that mm -hmm. whole world, and this is Spinal Tap, that kind of. It, it, the first mockumentary. Yeah, and that's, I've always loved that because I just, I remember watching it and being like, I don't understand what's happening here. Is this funny? Is it supposed to be funny? And it's there's almost like a math to it. You can't explain it. Like, yeah. either people find it funny or they don't. Waiting yeah. for Guffman, so, by the way, that's the remains of the day lunchbox mm. from Waiting for Guffman. So it's either you, you find it funny or you, yeah, I, yeah. I'm, I'm full of it. We, yeah. I like to live in this space. Yeah. I mean, there were so many talented people on that show. It, it, one of that comes to mind, obviously, is, is Glover. I yes. mean, what was it like? Like, this guy is a singular talent, triple threat. You just don't see these guys very often. I mean, he is so talented. He's unbelievable. Uh, we always knew it. I think it would be, um, it was funny. We, we knew what we had around the table. Um, 
we didn't know if people were gonna watch the show or appreciate it or sure. what it was gonna happen outside the room, but we spent so much time together. Our hours were crazy. And truly, we'd be like just riffing around the table and everyone had such a distinct point of view and yeah. personality. Donald is an incredible improviser. He already came in from 30 Rock. Mm -hmm. He also had been part of this comedy group, Derek, and done sketch comedy. So we vibed a little bit in the sketch I remember comedy. remember early jazz one that he yeah. did. I would watch that uh, incessantly. Hilarious. So good. And so I think we had a connection there through sketch comedy that right away I appreciated. And then he was always doing music on the side too. And we were like, what, what's, what is going on, right. Donald? Where, you know? And then he would play us music and we'd be like, okay, you're not gonna be here for a long time with us. Yeah. <laughs> you have other, he was just so talented in so many different ways, um, which is just cool, cool to watch. Yeah. Um, like I said, it was a very unique situation because you go around the table and, and no matter what, you put a topic on the table, everyone had sure. a really cool, distinct, fun point of view. Mm -hmm. um, and then Donald obviously has gone on to do, I mean, incredible things. Yeah. Insane, absolutely yeah. childish game. But you know all the things uh, he's done. So um, I mean, let's just talk about Donald for the next. Let's do it. Let's, let's do it. Just, let's first concert, my kids' first concert. My wife was pregnant. We uh, went to Childish Gambino concert. She sat backstage with the kids in the belly. I think they, she was eight months pregnant. So I tell them that was your first concert. It is. That's close enough. So that counts. They're viable. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it counts. Uh, but yeah, I just I had such a wonderful experience on that show, and um, I I love and cherish those people. Yeah, and that's what I I posted is Danny Pudi from Community, but he's done other things. Yeah. a lot of other things. <laughs> Back. A lot of it. Definitely prep. I, mm -hmm. I focus more and more on prep these days than I would initially. Like, okay. I run pretty much every day or exercise every day. That helps me just kind of calm, calms anxiety, helps mm -hmm. me feel focused. In the morning? Um, in the morning. Okay. It helps me learn my lines and just get grounded. Um, if I'm working on set and I haven't looked at my lines yet, definitely looking at my lines. Mm -hmm. Got to get those get get those in there. Um, so I like to exercise, like mm -hmm. to eat something, have some coffee for sure. Sure. Um, and then I just like to think about my character, where my character was most recently, mm -hmm. where my character is going, and um, just, I usually just kind of like walk. Like we talked about walking a lot. I do a lot of walking right. okay. with my character. So I'll walk around set, or I'll just like in character. Uh, thinking about it, okay. like kind of like think okay. about it. I just kind of will just like think about what I'm doing today or what's going to happen or what my character was doing. And it's just kind of like a, kind of getting into that space. Um, you studied yeah. with Diana Castle? I did, I yeah. did. Yeah. She did a lot of that, she's an acting teacher here, yes. does a lot of that absorption work. Yes, so yeah. Is it that kind of thing where you're sort of absorbing? She's wonderful, yeah, it was, uh, working with her was, was really helpful for me because sure. when I first went to her, <laughs> She was essentially uh, gave me an assignment to not do any comedy and just just drama work. Wow! And that was really challenging for me because at the time I'd only done comedy. And you're, you're a funny guy. And and I love comedy, but I yeah. you know sometimes fall back on that. You know. Of course. And her challenge to me was, uh, I just want you to think about the character, the stakes, the world, build the world around yeah. you. Right. Sit with that. You know. And. Um, you know, then we would ask questions. She would ask me questions about the world and yeah. what worked in the scene, what didn't, and it would open up all these other questions of maybe that I didn't have answers to, maybe I didn't think about. Um, and I think that taught me a lot about just world building sure. and just sitting with a character. And I think that to me has become definitely a process 30 seconds before, um, usually it's the night before or time before, where sure. I just kind of just live with that, that character and just try to think about all the possibilities. Where this, where's this character from? Who do they talk to? What do they like? What do they like to eat? Just all those questions. My brother yeah. is a writer and he said a long time ago, he read some writer, some author had said, you, if you don't know your character's shoe size, you haven't done the work. I love that. Nine and a half. I'm a nine. I'm a demo size. Yeah, <laughs> nine and a half. Yeah. My friend used to work at Nike and he goes, you want me to send you free shoes? I go, who doesn't want free shoes from Nike? I mean, come on, send yes. Send me a crate. Yes. Like Jordans and all these. I was like, wow. And he's like, what's your size? I go, nine. He goes, you're in luck. That's a demo size. Oh, demo size. That's good. Yeah, demo oh, size is nice. good. That's my little tidbit. So can you summon your talent at will? Are you able to just like turn it on? Or are there days where you go, and what do you do on those days where, mm. oh man, I, you're, I mean, you're so talented, but it's like, there's going to be days where you're not feeling it quite as much. Oh, absolutely. And it also it depends on what it is. Uh, if, if it's a character I've just been given, mm. um, I don't know the world yet, I'm still thinking about it, I might be anxious about it because I haven't done the work yet to sure. really feel like I can respond authentically or honestly in, a, in any situation, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and or if it's something technical, like mm -hmm. um, we had to do an episode of Community where I had to do like a Nicolas Cage impression. Doesn't allow for Nicolas freaking Cage, okay? Oh, yeah. Oh, 
I'm a cat. I'm a sexy cat. Oh, oh, oh. For instance, oh, yeah. or a Seinfeld impression. Right. There's a lot of these uh, impressions that Abbott had to do, and I don't consider myself an impressionist. That's I didn't come from that kind of background. Sure. Uh, I enjoy doing it, but that's not, definitely not my strong suit. You sure. know. And so I would be sitting in a corner stressing out, listening to Jerry Seinfeld videos or listening to Nicolas, Nicolas Cage, Cage movies, videos yeah. and just like making noises, oh, 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 like, like watching, you know, uh, leaving Las Vegas over and over and I would be like, is, is Danny okay? But meanwhile, I'm just like working on this. So I have to work at that, you know? So right. that's- That's out of your wheelhouse. That's out of my wheelhouse. Yeah. So that's not something I could just kind of summon. It's, uh, so let's summon it. Do yeah. you want to give us an impression? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I haven't been it's working like, at no, it. Of course I didn't. Have, have you listened to my answer? Uh, no. Well, no watch the video. Watch the Nicolas Cage video. Yeah, cool. Good or bad. Good. We'll, 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 watch, we'll watch the episode. And then watch Pig, which is incredible. And watch Pig? Nicolas Cage movie? Oh, uh, I've never seen it. Oh, it's so good. He's is great. it really? Yeah, it's great. Oh, okay. I've, yeah. I've never seen it. I didn't know what it was. Oh, it's really good. So I think you did it last year, maybe? It it's great. called Pig? Pig. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's I'm still, I think I'm still stuck at Raising in Arizona. I need to go through this catalog. <laughs> yeah, you got I've, 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 I've like Chevy Chase days. Yeah. <laughs> you got uh, it's, it's a, lot, a great movie, though. Raising in Arizona is great. Yeah, it, it yeah. is a really good one. Yeah. It is a really good one. Not well. I okay. usually talk to my wife or someone in my family who has, uh, I guess, better skills in that, in that capacity. I'm not really good at that. I mean, I've become better at that because I know you have to. You sure. have to really... And this is something I try to do. I try to protect my energy, try to protect my time. Um, but it's hard, it's especially hard when it's like friends and people that you know really well. Or for me, I, I, can, I love to work. I love to work. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes I have to slow down and tell myself like, well, you can't just always, always, always be going. You're also right. a father. You also have right. to make sure you're doing things that you love or are passionate about. So How old are your twins now? They're 10. They're 10 years old. Yeah. And so when they were born, how did that change? Like, how did you find that balance? Did you find that balance? <laughs> it seems, I mean, my child is one. He's 13 months. Congratulations. That's Thank amazing. Thank you. It's just, I don't uh, want him to grow. I love how they're that's just, a good, so, oh, uh, it's the best. So good. What's your son's name? His name is Naveen. Naveen. Amazing. Okay. Yeah. Um, what are your twins' names? James and Fiona. They're awesome. Oh, great. Yeah. 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 So uh, balance is tricky. Yeah. It's always been tricky. Does that it age, exist? it's I don't know. I think that's just that's something that is constantly something you're always working on. I did think you, did it, it change your uh, time of the day that you did things? So like I absolutely would always, yeah. So like morning you have to be up and on the. Were plane, you because right? as stand up you're probably a night person. Yeah. Right? Oh, I'm yeah. totally a night person. Okay. So. Which I love being because the day gets better. Yes. I feel bad for morning people because yeah. your uh, day is constantly getting worse. <laughs> My day is getting better. But it's I've almost, you know. I've had to shift to a morning person, and I think a lot of yeah. that is also with with TV work. Oftentimes you have to get up so early, so right. you have to figure out a way to get yourself ready early in the morning, mm -hmm. uh, which is for me exercise and you know kind of coffee, getting you going right away. Exercise and coffee. You love coffee. Of, love coffee. Yeah. Love coffee. It's like a ritual for me though. Is there it's a like, certain like yeah. is there a brand or is there a certain is it a certain roast or what's your I mean, I like medium roasts. Okay. I like a medium roast. Okay. Um, I don't know if there's a, I'm into this coffee called Mad Lab right now in LA. Okay. It's very good. There's no, a lot I don't, of, I don't, LA I has a lot of great coffee. I, it's, absolutely. It's you know so where good. else does? Yeah. Australia. Yeah, there's actually a lot of Australian coffee out here. Yeah, right? I, like, that's why Starbucks lately. did not do well initially because when I got there, the booker was like, welcome to the land of superior coffee. I was like, what? And I didn't say that because I looked it up. It's like, he's like, and then I, when I talked to him, he goes, oh, that's a little known fact. We are oh. known for our coffee. Or we're not known for it. Oh, that's amazing. I've had a Proud Mary, I believe, is a roaster mm. from, from mm -hmm. Australia. Excellent. There's a lot of good coffee. But um, anyway, kids, today, my yeah, kids, yeah, my yeah, kids. Yeah, let's, yeah, let's, yeah. Um, let's see here. It shifted your day. You shifted, have to, you have yeah. So now I'm more of a morning person. And a lot mm -hmm. of that has to do with the kids, too. Mm -hmm. Like, they're just the necessity of getting up in the morning has mm -hmm. actually helped me become a morning person. Yeah. But it's hard. It you. But now I'm like, I mean, 10 o'clock, I'm like, shoo, lights yeah. out, which is good because I used to be like 10 o'clock, like, let's yeah. go. Right. Let's go. Totally. Yeah. yeah I've had yeah. to change that too. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, I think it's good ultimately because I feel like I have more energy in the morning now to be creative. And, but it's that having kids was definitely a shift because of that. Yeah. And I think a good shift for me. Recently, um, a, uh, a student uh, wrote me a letter, and um, it was um, someone that we already kind of knew through my kids. They were friends and a friend of a friend, and it was just really meaningful. It really um, kind of spoke to how this person discovered community and how it really helped them get through some times. And, 
you know, every once in a while I'll get like a letter or, or something from someone mm -hmm. um, talking about uh, some of the work uh, that I've done that has connected with them or helped them through something. And that to me is like, is really, really sweet and special. So, um, and then in terms of like funny stuff, uh, mm -hmm. I had a flight attendant kiss me one time because she said she wanted me to give that to Joel McHale. So that was interesting. I had no uh, concept of, that's weird where a flight attendant has no concept of boundaries. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's a little, there's some irony in there somewhere. That's crazy. It was interesting. Um, like and, just grabbed you and kissed you yes, on the cheek? And said that's for Joel McHale. No lips. Oh, wow. That's rather presumptuous. So what, what did Joel say when you kissed him? Uh, he just took it. He yeah. accepted it. That's very nice. He's very generous. He's very imp improvisational. He's like. very generous. That's he's, great. He's a great, great scene partner. Yeah. Um, and did you feel was, something in the universe, like her, her satisfaction? You them? always got to complete yeah. the loop. Right? Yeah. When things like it's, I, did I you would fly, feel did like, you fly that same route just uh, trying to pay it? Uh, like you know what? <laughs> I did it. <laughs> That's the full loop. No, but yeah. like even yeah. like when someone is like, hey, make sure to say hi to so and so for right. me. I think about that, and if and I you really don't, do it, I have to. If I, uh, if I mean, I'll forget inevitably sometimes. But like if I remember it, I have to do it. And it yeah. feels so good when you yeah. were like, oh, yeah, yeah, so-and-so uh, who used to take yoga class with you said what's up. And they'll be like, oh, cool. And I'll be like, I did it. You did it. You completed the circle. I completed the, the circle. The circle's complete. I feel like so victorious. It's like when you floss. It's like you feel like you did something greater than. Do you floss before you brush or after? Uh, after. Yeah, or, me yeah. too. But everybody, but, when I posted this on Facebook. They do floss first, then first, brush. First, yes. I'm like, what, do you, what psychopaths do that? I mean, I have done it. I'm not totally against it. Uh, it doesn't feel right. like right in the order for me. Yeah. Sometimes I'll just floss. Like sometimes like, I'll have to floss in the car because I'm like, I got to go somewhere and I don't have, I, you can't brush your teeth in the car. But like, oh, wow. Yeah, I'll just floss. But then what, you'll just like rinse your mouth oh, yeah. out with water. Yeah, 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 and it feels, again. Or coffee? That coffee, kind of defeats the purpose. <laughs> yeah, floss and coffee. Coffee and floss, that doesn't. It's like starfish right. and coffee. Not one of those great combinations. Yeah. No. It's like, yeah, two things that you love putting them together just doesn't work sometimes. That one doesn't work. Not, not no. at all. Mm -mm, yeah, mm -mm, Australian mm -mm. coffee too. Australian coffee well, and dental floss? It. And floss. That'd but, be the ultimate. Uh, yeah, so you, but yeah. you pay it for it. So yeah. I guess uh, there was Fu, I think his name's Fu Wen. He goes, uh, I love Fu. Oh, you remember him? Yes, yeah, start okay. right night. He goes, he goes yes. tell him I said hi. Oh, my, how do you know Fu? Stand up or what? Uh, yeah, okay, he, cool. uh, we have a mutual friend. Okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, he's amazing. Yeah. He's an amazing chef. Oh, I, I don't know if I, no, I know he cooks, but I don't think he's ever cooked for me. Now oh that I gosh. pass along the high, I'm going to cash this in. Oh, you better tell him. I was him. like, I'm going to get food. I gave an tell, on camera yes, hello. Tell him I said, I want yeah, a dinner. He's, uh, he's awesome. And also, like, yeah, like, I think we, we went over there for dinner one time, and he's an amazing chef. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. All the other people who said to say hi now, they're going to be mad at me. But yeah, <laughs> that's, 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 I did it for food. That, that's good. Joel will love that question. He will love it. Tell him I said hi. I don't uh, know. I, I will tell him. I will tell him now. Um, I have to tell him now. now. Feels, I will. Yeah, <laughs> it feels way less invasive. <laughs> we'll do an elbow. Yeah, or do something. it. Get, pass that along. Thank you. I'll give him an elbow. Um, he. Uh, it's funny because I've gotten that question before. I love playing this character, Brad, because it's sure. it's um, one of the fun things is that the show is a uh, show run by Megan Gans, co-creator, who is a writer on Community as well. Wow. And so when this opportunity came about, she told me this character is not like Abed at all. Mm -hmm. He's more of a, you know, this kind of slippery, maybe shady character, mm -hmm. sort of villainous office uh, right. character. And I was like, this is a sign me up. This sounds really great. Yeah. And I do think about Joel sometimes. Yeah. Uh, if I had to think about any tips he would give me, he'd probably show me his knife collection. He... Uh, <laughs> is this real? This is so real. This not, is real. not Cutco knives. No, I sold Cutco knives. So did I. Did, door to door? Did, yeah, door to door. You cut the rope, cut uh, the tomato. Cut the rope, cut uh, Amber, Abraham and the Lincoln's scissors? chest. Uh, you, you cut into Abraham Lincoln's chest to cut the penny. You can cut oh, a penny. Oh, yes. I, and I would always make a joke about, like, uh, I'm not a southerner, but if I were, this would feel really good. <laughs> I'd close the sale with racists ah. all the time. <laughs> that was a hard job. That was a hard was job. Hard job. But hard no, job. the close rate, yeah. I think, was like 60 to 70%. Yeah, because it's family. So, yeah, they yeah. have to. Yeah, something. you're just going to cousins. We still have those knives. They're, but they're excellent knives. They are really that one nice. circular one is like, do you know that circular one? That's I'm one of my favorites. One. It was like wobbly and stuff like that. Oh, well, I have like the bread knife. That one's amazing too. That's phenomenal. The, the scissors. scissors are great. I mean. Is, is Cutco a sponsor? They should be. Yeah, yeah, this is QVC, <laughs> what, what's happening? <laughs> Mary Kay, let's talk about Mary Kay. Let's just go in on all uh, that But stuff. yeah, Joe McHale has an incredible knife collection. Yeah. That's, that is something I would not have guessed. In one word, what are you? Uh, 
Silly? I don't know. Yeah, silly. silly. I, I, I think now an adjective, either one's fine. Uh, Silly's good. Goofy, silly. I think mm-hmm. something I feel like, you know. Yeah, you have a very Gumby vibe, too, yeah. which I'm sure you get all the time. Gumby. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure yeah. you get that a lot. Yeah. I try to walk gently and um, put out and take in as much good energy as possible. That's kind of like what I try to th- I think about that. I just try to be like, I want to gently walk through space um, with people, with the world, and just try to provide good energy. And, and that's just sort of a mission. I don't know, just something I think about. That's awesome. Yeah. You do it. I try to. It's, you have very yeah. good energy. Oh. That, like the room lit up when you walked in. Oh. You think you sounded like Martin Short when you did that. That's very Martin ah, Short. Yeah. That's ah, very Martin Short. That was great. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I feel you're like... Because you half, half Polish, yeah, half Yeah, so Indian. my father was born in India, my mother was born in Poland. They both immigrated to Chicago in the 70s. I performed in Poland uh, right before the pandemic. Did you really? Yeah, I did, I did a gig in Warsaw. Oh, Warszawa! To moje miasto! Mam rodzinę tam! So you do speak Polish. Tak, uh-huh. Yeah. It'd be funny if I'm like, you do speak Hindi. Like, uh, oh boy. Yeah. No, my yeah. family speaks Telugu. I do not, unfortunately. Okay. Oh, but you I, don't speak Telugu? I don't. Okay. I don't. But Polish, um, you're but totally I do. fluent. I do. Uh, I grew up with my grandparents who were from Poland. They raised me, essentially. And wow. so I had to speak Polish to eat. <laughs> and so, yeah. But every yeah. day they would pick me up from school and we would speak Polish at home. So it was, a, it was kind of a, it was an unusual but wonderful background yeah. and, and, and experience. Um, yeah. What was the question? I don't so, know. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I, I didn't grow up with a lot of, um, I didn't grow up seeing a lot of people like me on television or in film. And uh, I remember thinking it would be nice to um, see someone like me, to, mm-hmm. to, to, to believe that I could do that someday. So I hope that I could do that for the next generation. So I feel like the more I'm out there, the visibility I have, um, hopefully I can um, encourage and inspire the next generation of artists to be weird, to create, to do whatever they want to do mm-hmm. in the entertainment industry. Mm-hmm. Most of them. <laughs> All of them. <laughs> Everything you haven't seen yet. Uh, there could always be more. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, uh, who is the, uh, like, I, f- I feel like there's more and more now. It's an incredibly exciting time yeah. now because now you have, like, Never Have I Ever. You have um, Definition Please, who yeah. does a film. Like, the range of projects now are are, are really interesting mm-hmm. and fun. And I, I, I hope expand the, um, the idea of what um, Asian American means, though, sure. you know? Uh, so, in terms of what is missing, I think I think there's room to see a lot. I yeah. think I'd love to see a thirty for thirty by the the, the javelin uh, thrower who won the gold medal in, from India. That'd yeah. be great. He's, right. He was incredible. Um, there could be sports documentaries. There could be uh, something sci-fi. Always room for more sci-fi. Mm-hmm. I'm very interested. I want to see a Battlestar Galactica. Yeah. You know, like that I want to see that kind of version. I'd like uh, to see a that. javelin catch. <laughs> Pull a Danny means to find a parking structure with plenty of empty spaces. Mm-hmm. Decide that you're not comfortable in that parking structure, even though it is lo- it's located directly next to the event uh, space that you need to be at. You drive past that parking structure looking for something better. Street parking is ideal. You drive, you do two loops, maybe three loops. Now you're late. You're late for the event. People are waiting for you. You're getting more anxious. You still haven't found a spot. More people are coming. There's more traffic. You're running out of gas. You finally decide that there are no parking spaces. You pull into the parking structure. You feel smothered and claustrophobic by the idea of a parking structure. You park anyway. You rush into the event like three minutes late, and everyone's like, where have you been? And you're like, I got here. That is the best answer to that question I've ever received. It is beautiful in its specificity. Do you, can you concentric circle it out? Is that your... I love circles, and I, I don't know why. I've never felt really comfortable in a parking structure. Do you, you got to pay for it? Is that why? Or is it just like, is it it's dangerous? Me, I, th- it I feel like, like urine? I feel like I like open, open spaces, and I like mm-hmm. the, be- the ability to be like, park, and then you can go. Get out. You can go, right? Yeah. There's something about a parking structure. It feels like you're, you're locked in well, to you an are. adventure. You are. Yeah, you are very, you're stuck. Uh, I should have just found that first spot. Or you just, you know, I got to get more comfortable with them. So I need to face my fears. I need to face parking structures. Yeah, that, that is that your biggest fear? 
It's, 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 it's honestly one of them. It's yeah, honestly. it seems like it is. Are you afraid yeah. it's going to like pancake in on a you? A little bit, maybe. Okay. Maybe that. <laughs> I'm maybe trying to that. feed your fear. Yeah, it's I know. It's going to relieve it. Maybe I'm like, that. here's something else that could happen. Yeah, there's, there's just like gates. Like I've been in a parking structure before where that, you know, the arms start yeah. going crazy. Oh, wow. Like things like that. I just Like all of them at once or just yours? Just the one that, I, that was trying to okay. get me, you know? And I'm yeah. like, oh, the machines are going to take over. I'm in here and now I can't. You leave your car then and you just have to build a new life without the car. Yeah, that would be hard. But you love to walk. I love to walk. And you walk fast. I love to walk. So if anyone could live without a car. <laughs> it would be me. Yeah. It, it, it would, would be you. hard, but I could do it. Yeah. Okay. Um, Chicago sports would be one. Oh. Chicago sports. Okay. Um, let's see here. What year did uh, the White Sox throw the um, series to the Cincinnati Reds? Oh, boy. Yeah. They, um, Los Angeles sports okay. be a category. Chicago uh, Bulls sports would okay. be another category. Okay. Um, I'm seeing a, a theme here. Uh, White Sox won the World Series in 2005. Does that count? I know that. That's good. That's good. Um, That's, are you a White Sox guy or a Cubs I'm a White guy? Sox fan. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I wouldn't have guessed that. Um, I grew up in Brighton Park uh, mm. until I was 11 years old on mm. the Chicago South Side. So mm. that was my early memories were like riding my bike to Comiskey Park with my brother. And okay. yeah, so uh, one of my earliest memories. Yeah, that's so awesome. I think it's loyalty to where I was. Yeah, yeah. that's good. You haven't, yeah. you haven't lost that. You're Jenny from the block. Mm. And potpourri. Potpourri would be another category. Oh, yeah. The potpourri category is great. I always feel like I do pretty well mm-hmm. on that. That's good. <laughs> I read. This is actually big news. I finally rode a horse during the pandemic for the first time. This was a life goal. I've never been on a horse, wow. and I rode a horse, and it was thrilling and terrifying, and um, it, it wasn't quite as scary as a parking structure, but it was. It, yeah. it was on the cusp. It was adjacent. It feels like the the pony story from Seinfeld. She even had a pony. <laughs> oh, how she loved that pony. <laughs> Even in her declining years, whenever she would speak of it, her eyes would light up. Its lustrous coat, its flowing mane, it was the pride of Krakow. Yeah, I, when I went to okay. Warsaw, everybody's like, you should go to Krakow. Beautiful city. The, the, the town square, the Stadionek, is like gorgeous. Wow. It's, it's amazing. Yeah. Really cool. Really cool. I really want to go. Maybe that's where we can do our fast walking contest. That's a great way to speed walk around the square. Yeah. Woo! Oh, wow. Love it. Mm, mm. Let's play ping pong. Let's do it. What, what's the craziest thing you've ever seen? The craziest thing I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. I've seen a lot of crazy shit. Yeah. Um, do you feel like you've seen some shit? I definitely have. Okay. Um, I mean, I, like, I remember as a little kid, like, there's so many stories. The first story that pops up is I went to a store and I was returning bottles for my grandma. Um, she loved 7-Up, loved 7-Up. Okay. And wow. so I was returning these bottles to a store called Butera, southwest side of Chicago. And she let me do this when I was really little, different time. Uh, and I had a, a whole like bag full of these green bottles, right? To return to get five cents per bottle. Uh-huh. And as I walked into Butera, there was a man robbing the store. Whoa. <laughs> and, and there was all these security guards grabbing him and it was this like, it was messy. It was like just real messy. And they apprehended the man. And I was just standing there holding these bottles. Half of them were slipping out of my hands. And that was like one of my like earliest memories. Wow. Um, and then did I, you get yeah. the deposit of I did. money? I did. I got my 45 cents. No. <laughs> and you didn't get robbed for it? No, but it was, it was crazy because I just remember like being like, that was not what I expected to happen um, yeah. on the way to the grocery store. So, and you know, that was kind of crazy. I saw... I mean, I've seen, let's see here, like strange things. I think being in this industry, you always see strange things, you yeah. know? I mean, I, I met Master P when I was dressed as uh, Jamie Lee Curtis. And that wow. was like very, very strange. Cause I was like, hey, Master P, what's up, man? I'm a big fan. And I realized I was dressed as Jamie Lee Curtis from True Lies. Cause we were filming an episode about, I don't even know what it was in Community. <laughs> That's right, wow. <laughs> so that was, that was an And he was just there? He was, I'm not sure why he was there. He was on, uh, we were filming at Paramount and he was okay. on a lot. And that was, um, that was pretty, one of those moments where you're like, this is really happening right now. That is wild. I saw a woman crash a car into a tree in front of my house, and then uh, she just took off and left the car there. That was wild. So like a hit and run on an inanimate object. 
Yeah, and it was her own car, and she left it there. Um, so that was kind of fun. I oh, this is a good one. When I was a little kid, um, I was an altar boy. Okay. And uh, me and my brother would serve mass together. Uh, we grew up Catholic. Yeah. And um, during one of the masses, the priest showed up. It was early mass, and he was like grinding his teeth and like, <laughs> slurring his words. Whoa. Yeah. And. Uh, Eventually, another priest came in and like had to like escort him off the, the altar. Her. Yeah. And me and my brother were just sitting there, and I was like, "So are we priests now? Do we do we take over? Is this our show? Is this my time? Is this my time?" That's how it passed what on. What message like, do I want to share? Yeah, it's like the um, queen. It's like the queen's passing. It's just exactly uh, in reality, like that. I just stood there for maybe like four minutes and just <laughs> stared. So that was uh, that was kind of weird. That uh, is very weird. Yeah. There's you know there's always kind of unusual things happening and I just, I love to witness them. It's always fun. Yeah, that is quite a litany of things that you've seen. That's, that's wild. Now, was your dad Catholic also or was it mostly just the, the maternal influence? My, my mother grew up Catholic. She's from Poland. My yeah. father is Christian. Okay. Um, and uh, their family is Christian in um, Andhra Pradesh. Because a lot of uh, Christian Indians are Catholic. Yeah, I don't, I guess I, I don't know. Yeah, our family, I, I think, are mostly like Lutheran. Okay, so more Protestant. Mm -hmm. I think that's a little uh, rare when it comes to but, Indians. But I think there's, there's, uh, there's both uh, in that yeah. area. Yeah. Got it. Are you religious at all? Yeah, I, I, you know, I believe in a higher power. Uh -huh. um, I wouldn't say I'm very deeply religious. Um, I, I consider myself a little bit more, you know, um, spiritual. Yeah. You know, try to be kind to other people and try to... to to respect all, all life, that's really it. When people yeah. say they're spiritual, not religious, I hear my wife saying, I'm not angry, I'm just upset. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. I'm, I'm pretty flexible, I mean, you know, I, but I'm definitely not like um, devout. My grandparents were pretty, pretty religious and um, it just, you know, it's, it's something that stick with me, sticks with me. Yes. Yeah. I remember them praying all the time. I could hear it when, uh, when I'd come home from school, but. Um, is there a yeah. philosophy or a quote or something with which you deeply disagree? So somebody says something and you're just like, it's kind of accepted, but then you go, wait a second, that's not true. You know, my mom sometimes says no regrets and yeah. <laughs> I have regrets. <laughs> so, uh, that's a good one. It, that's one with my mom that sometimes I, I know it's, and I, she's amazing. She's like the most optimistic person I know. Wow. Um, cause you seem pretty optimistic. I'm pretty optimistic. Yeah. I definitely take that from her. Yeah. Um, but I, I also believe that there are choices I've made in my past and there's things that we could learn and grow. And yeah. so I definitely have some regrets, you know, do you believe that she really has no regrets? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I'd have I do. To ask her. <laughs> I know I do. We, we could we could book her. You, we could you book, her book her. You gotta ask her. We could yeah. ask her directly. <laughs> what regrets do you have? Oh man, I, I was pretty messy in high school. I was all over the place. Detention. You were hiding behind Sam. Oh, big time. I was like, I was having all the identity crises. Um, oh wow. You know, um, you know, I was getting in trouble in school and you know, doing things that weren't necessarily making the best choices. Uh -huh. um, you know. With acting, who are your, your biggest influences? I mean, who are the people that you looked to as you were studying, as, in, in film especially? Hmm. I mean, Irfan Khan, amazing. He's one of the first actors that comes to mind. Yeah. He's just incredible. Um, Rest in peace. I talk about this, I know. He's amazing. Lunchbox, yeah. that's, that's a movie I'd love to see made, um, a version of that kind of story. Um, sure. He's just like a very uh, grounded, uh, subtle actor. I, so I always appreciated his work. Yeah. So natural. So natural. Just ease, you know. Yeah. Um, who else? Helena Bonham Carter. I've always just loved her. Yeah. I just think she makes interesting, bold choices. Um, Definitely. I love Big Fish. It's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. And she's so good in oh, that. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, That's a great fatherhood movie. Which one? That's, it fish. is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's oh, a really yeah. good one to watch with your That's dad. That's great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I actually watched that not too long ago. That's with the kids. It was, it was very good. Yeah. It's lovely. Yeah. Uh, what's your, um, what's your funny movies? The ones that like make you go, oh my gosh, that's, I got to pop that in because it's, I'm Noah's Laugh Riot. Ooh, okay. Um, I'm trying to think of like, well, Monty Python and Holy Grail. It's okay. Like, that's the childhood one where yeah. I'm laughing because of 
stuff that's not on screen. You know, I'm laughing because I remember me and my brother. Yeah. And the, I, I'm thinking of the jokes coming up. You know, I'm thinking of the. Uh, it's an experience. The swallows and the coconuts. Yeah. You know, and the nights of meat and like, you know, I'm not I've dead worse. yet. I, that's it's that kind of movie where yeah. you're just constantly thinking about it's all, all the fun quotes. stuff. Just all quotes. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, yeah that, that's a great one. Scary ones? Are you in the scary movies at all or not at all? I'm not really. <sighs> scary movies are hard for me to watch. I, I have a rule where I have to watch scary movies at noon. Yeah. Like with a sandwich. Yeah. So I can be distracted, slightly distracted and awake. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I hear you. No, but, I'm not really into them either, but I always like to ask people what's but The Shining would be one where I'm, like, it still terrifies me. And That's I think my all-time number one scariest. It's, un, it's just an incredible movie. Yeah. Yeah, it really is. Movie you have not seen that would surprise us? Uh, Citizen Kane. Dirty, oh, yeah. Dirt, Dirty Dancing. That's one where my wife and I, we've had this ongoing discussion where she knows every frame from Dirty Dancing. Yeah. I've never seen it, and now I'm trying, trying not to see it. Ever. <laughs> You're like, you know what? Say, can I? Because it's like, it's one of those movies where I think I know the whole movie just because my, I'm living with my wife yeah. and, and friends and everyone's <laughs> described it so many times to me that I'm like, I don't know if I ever have to see it. I feel like I know the movie yeah. so well. Yeah. Yeah. You're like Jenny and Forrest Gump. Like, I wish I would have been there with you. You were. <laughs> you were. <laughs> you were. Exactly. It's such a touching lie, but it always makes me laugh. I'm like, that's, that's, that's pretty clever, Forrest Gump. Speaking of for, uh, ping pong, you know, that's that, that oh, like a God. good, this good is reference. a good volley right here. Good, good reference, I know, I'm telling you. you. So do you play ping pong? Lately we've been playing pickleball, my family. That's be been the biggest craze. It's the rage, and I'm just trying not to tear my Achilles. Um, okay. Because it, it, there's such sudden movements, you know, but it's really fun because you can experience success pretty quickly during it, you know, okay. which has been really nice. And so um, my wife and my two kids, we just bought some pickleball rackets and we've been doing it um, over the last couple of years now. And it's been really like a nice family activity, that and escape rooms. That's been our thing. Oh yeah, those are fun. Love them. Yeah, that's, that was, I, my wife and a friend of ours and I did that. And for that particular round, I was useless. <laughs> I could not contribute in any meaningful way. And at that point, you just, you just become the person who just is keeping track just, of what's happening. You're just like, oh, there's, a, there's a little more time left, guys. <laughs> like, you, like any basic math that could be done, or we've got three, we have three of the things done. We have, we're 60% of the way there. Like, you just become a cheerleader. But you knew your role. Like, that was me in group projects in college. My wife would laugh because she knew right away that like I would be the one in the group to be like positive energy guy, yeah. cheerlead, loosen up. Hey, do you think that we think we need a break? Who wants to go get some like Coca Colas? I'll get the coffee. Yeah, let's go. I'll get. <laughs> I'll get snacks, guys. I'll get snacks. I got yeah, snacks. That's totally me. I, there were times that I studied engineering, okay. and at the first college, I was I was really not into it at all. So I was the guy like setting up the study group and make sure everybody had paper. <laughs> make, you, got, you need a pen. Supp you supply know? guy. That's a role. That counts. It a hey, that counts. No small parts. Yep. No small parts. That's what I say. Oh my God. What would you say your celebrity has afforded you? Like now that you're a public figure, does it feel different? I mean, obviously people come up to you. What, what has it like changed for you though? It's interesting. I think um, definitely people recognize me now when I walk out in public and walk sure. out on the street. That's always interesting. It uh, happens a lot. Yeah, it's especially depending on where I am. You know? Sure. So if I'm like walking through a, um, a, a big touristy area. You go to the Grove. Yeah, it's a little different than if I'm just like kind of like going to play pickleball. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Um, but it's just kind of, it's a weird feeling, you know? I mean, as a kid, I would honestly get looked at all the time because I always felt like I was the only one that looked like me. Sure. <laughs> and now I feel like I get looked at because people recognize me. So it's, it's been like kind of a switch, you know? Yeah. Um, Do you like it? You just kind of get used to it. Because um, I, I know we're not supposed to admit, like people aren't supposed to admit that they like it, but yeah. I think a lot of people do like it. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I don't know. It just kind of depends on what it is. Like it's, um, sometimes it's just really nice to be anonymous. So you can kind of just go about your day. Yeah. Um, but it's also really nice when people are like, I appreciate your work. So that's really sure. nice. Um, sure. And, um, you know, sometimes it can be a little bit like, oh, okay, if like I'm, you know, racing through an airport with my kids, you know. Sure. You know, that can get a little tricky sometimes. Yeah. But, but usually, you know, the people are really kind and it's fine. <laughs> what, um, let's, let's do, let's play Never Have I Ever. What have you not, never done? I've never skydived. Neither have I. Um, I've never bungee jumped. 
Neither have I. Which one of those would you do first? Gun to your head. Oh. You're going this afternoon. We got to do one of them. Oh, I don't like this one. I don't like You're this like, one. I will go to a parking garage. Am, I, am I attached to someone during the skydive? Sure, yes. Yes, skydive then. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'll put but my, if not, then. I'll like, put no. my hand into another human being's hands versus a rope if I had to pick one. Oh. But I, I feel like both are uh, both kind of scary. What about you? I would do skydiving because if you mess up, it's over. That's it. Bungee <laughs> jumping, you, you could live and be seriously disfigured. I don't know if I want, yeah, I don't know if I want to do either. That's, ugh. yeah. They always say you don't need a parachute to go skydiving. You need a parachute to go skydiving twice. There's a quote. There's a quote. <laughs> there's, there's, a quote. there's a quote with which I strongly agree. I also don't want to like uh, climb Mount Everest or things like that. That's stuff I've never done. I don't. I, I don't Do you know. have a bucket list? Is it more like um, craft related? I feel like I am very fortunate. I get to do kind of what I love. I love to travel. So bucket list wise, I just want to keep traveling as much as I can sure. and see as many different places I, as I can. So. I guess that would be my bucket list to just go to more places. Yeah. Where, what's the next place you're like, man, I really want to. Or, or if you never yeah. went there, you'd be like, I regretted not going there. I've never been to Southeast Asia. I've okay. always wanted to go to um, you know, Vietnam mm -hmm. and um, you know, that part of the world. I've also you know, wanted to go to Korea. Mm -hmm. there's, there's a lot of places I've, I've wanted to go to, but that's, I think, two of the places. Are you fairly okay. well traveled in India? Not really. I've only been to India twice. Oh wow! I've been to India twice. Um, to the village, or, or I've like been where to you're our from? village once. Okay. Um, it's pretty remote, but mm -hmm. uh, yeah, my family's in Andhra Pradesh, Rajamundry, Hyderabad, um, mm -hmm. and it's it's beautiful. I'd love to go back. So that's definitely on the list. I've never had been there with my kids. So yeah. That's kind of the next journey that I know I want to take. Yeah. Do they want to go? Yes. Yeah. 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 And have you taken them to Poland? We've been to Poland. That was our trip right before um, the pandemic. We went there. We might have been there at the same time. Yeah, I was there in February of 2020. Okay. Oh, you were there in We were there in uh, summer of 2019 okay. uh, for a cousin's wedding. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I went with my mom, which was lovely because it was like a, you know, a chance for us to visit her her town and you know see where she went to school and that was that was really cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Okay. Networking. How much has it helped you? Did you ever go to networking events? Do you find that they're helpful? Has it, have you been mostly focused? I know you're very focused on your craft, but people, always, this is a question that I always wonder about. Like, is it worth doing these happy hours and mixers and meeting people, or is it more just do the work and mm -hmm. do the work? I don't know. I think it's probably career specific. You uh -huh. know? I, I don't really do most of that, um, but you know, before I was before I was an actor, I was an actuarial recruiter in Chicago. Oh. And we had mixers, and they were valuable. It was a great place to meet clients, and um, I guess uh, put a face to a name. Yeah. And because so much of the work was done over the phone or the internet, sure. That it was a nice way to kind of you know have a moment face to face. So. Yeah. I would say, in terms of auditions though, and like meeting people. Definitely face to face. I appreciate face to face. I you think do. It is, oh yeah, in the Zoom era, even like I think a lot of stuff can get done that way. But I, I. Well, I, you're an yeah, energy person. I am so. definitely an energy person. Mm -hmm. I like it's kind of like you know feeling someone out and connecting with someone. And I just feel like it's a, it, it provides a different sort of story you can tell. So is that yeah. okay? So when you walk into a room, yeah. you're auditioning. Yep. <clears throat> How much of that is when you're when you're saying that? Is it like before you start doing the scene, you think that all helps and you think that helps you book the role or is it more just whatever you do with the scene? I think, oh, that's interesting. So I think in terms of acting, uh -huh. I do believe the, the more time for me personally, because I think everyone has a different process. Sure. I think for me personally, my process, I like to sit with a character, kind of build the world and um, you know, I eventually I kind of know, I kind of know, but I also know if I haven't spent enough time with something, I haven't thought about it and sat, right. sat with it, I know that. You haven't done the work. I haven't really done the work yet, right? So the lines are one thing. The other th thing which I think is more important is the world and it's mm -hmm. like the characters, like where are they coming from? And then mm -hmm. I think if I spend enough time with the world, mm -hmm. the lines come pretty easily. And, and I that's know. why I mean the scene. That's yeah. why I didn't say lines, because okay. I, I agree with yeah. you wholeheartedly. Yeah, yeah. so I think it's, I, I think that, 
that part of it is more important to me than the lines or the scene. Right. Like that uh, kind of creating the world. Because then I think if the lines change, you're fine. Mm -hmm. You know, um, then you're not reliant on it. Um, is that what you were asking, I guess? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah I think yeah. so. I mean, to me, it's sometimes like I feel I book things less because I was great at the scene and more that I did make a connection yes. with, with the casting director. Oh, okay. They, they I liked me. Yeah, okay. I think, I think the connections are good. For sure, and because, I mean... And I mean a connection, an energetic connection. Yes. I don't mean like I emailed the person or something like that. I, I do feel like that matters. Maybe not matter for that role. You might not be a fit for that role. But sure. it, it, you, you matter because the cast director will think of you and be like, this person might not fit this exact role, but I think their energy is right for the show or this story, you know? And mm -hmm. I always feel like that's important. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, at least I tell myself that when I don't book something too. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right, right, totally, yeah. But uh, I always, yeah, that's something you can control. That's the biggest thing, you know. Totally right. You can't control what you look like unless you're dressed as Jamie Lee Curtis. <laughs> then maybe you can kind my of. My choice. It was my choice. Very much, you're like, you could have been anything, but they're like, maybe your favorite, like, Chicago sports figure. You're like, no, I want to do Jamie Lee Curtis. Yeah. That's my mood today. It's either Jamie Lee Curtis or who is it going to be that year? No, it was going to be... Uh, this is, I'm a big 90, 95, 96 Bulls, 97 Bulls. Uh, could have been Jordan. So could have been, been yeah, Cartwright. maybe Jordan. Luke, Luke Longley. Longley. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cartwright. 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 San yes. Francisco. Yeah. I'd be get any of those guys. You know, it could be Steve Kerr, John Paxton. Uh, Paxton. 3.9 seconds left. Three pointer. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I know my Chicago Bulls. You know, Bulls it. You know yeah. your Bulls. Cliff yeah, Levingston, you remember Cliff Levingston? I do. Love Cliff Levingston. What time is it? Game time. Game time. That's still one of my favorite. Like, uh, I would say top like three songs of all time is uh, Serious, uh, Alan Parsons Project. Yes, just because, because of, of that. The, just because of the Bulls intro. I I went back on YouTube and was watching old Bulls intros. Just chills. Yeah, chills. Chills. Exactly. I still get them. I still get them. Oh. From North Carolina, six foot six. <laughs> Michael Jordan. Yeah. Last question. Yeah. Last question. Last question. You're an optimist. Yep. How are you feeling about the way everything is going? Because <laughs> <laughs> I love to ask optimists this question. Because I'm a comedian. I'm surrounded by I pessimists. Are, would you say you're a pessimist? No. I'm a natural born optimist, but oh, I've cool. learned to become a pessimist. Okay. <laughs> I think it's important to consider both sides for sure. Sure. Um, find, I, find people on both sides. You do. You know, I think I think um, I am an optimist, and I definitely choose to um, find ways to help me feel good and grounded sure. and um, just healthy overall. You know, so that's exercise, but it's also like feeling um, starting myself with people like my wife and my kids, and mm -hmm. um, choosing who I spend time with and how I spend my time. I think that's the biggest thing. I think time is something I've been more conscious of mm -hmm. lately, and um, you know, really trying to put my energy and time into things that make me feel good. Mm -hmm. Really, that. And so, y yes, there are a lot of things that are problems. There's um, a lot of things that can make us feel hopeless. Um, yeah. You know. Um, but um, I think the, um, for me, uh, what I really just try to do is find uh, reasons to remember um, how fortunate I am, mm -hmm. all the good things that I have around me, um, how lucky I am to have a job and the ability to connect with people everywhere. And that's really cool. And I think that fills me with a lot of gratitude and makes me hopeful. So, yeah. I love it. I love the optimism. We're done with the questions, but we can just keep doing this until we're done. Ah! Oh, yeah. Yeah, I yes. see how long we can keep it going. Ooh, look at this. Who's putting the spins on? <clears throat> Amazing. Oh, oh, I try okay. to get fancy. I try That's to get good. fancy. Everybody, Amazing. thank you for joining us on What Do You Bring to the Table. Any final words? Thank you. And it's really nice to see everyone here and here and here. Thanks That's for having fantastic. Me. Where can people find you if you want them to find you? Uh, Daniel Pudi, at Daniel Pudi on Instagram. Um, I'm around. Awesome. Thank you, Danny Pudi, for giving us your time Thank you. and your energy. That was a gift to us, so we really appreciate that. Thank you for joining us on this episode of What Do You Bring to the Table. I've been your host, Rajiv, and I still am. Bye-bye. Aw, -bye. Oh, thank you so much. There's a lot of...